tonight's activities. Principal Chad Adams, everybody. Good evening, everyone. Uh, just wanted to say welcome to Sullivan. Um, if, we don't have many students here. They were tired. We work them hard during the day, so they went home. Uh, but we, if you work at Sullivan, raise your hand. There's a few of you over there. there there's some city year members and members. I just want to say thank you all for coming. These are, these are uh, my assistant principal. My vice principal right here is Mr. Augustin Amua. I wanted to just call him out. Um, thank you all for coming. This, this, um, tonight is really important to me. I, first of all, we're in the month that we celebrate black history, and tomorrow we're going to have our Black History Month celebration. And, and some of the battles that we were fighting before I was even born are still being fought today, and this is proof positive of that. And we, we got some shirts. I'm not allowed to show the kids, and none of them are here, so I can... All the, our kids tomorrow are going to get these shirts. Say, black is beautiful. So that's what we're about here at Sullivan. And my father, you know, my, my father was a police officer in Mississippi. And obviously I'm a white male, and, um, and he was white as well. And working in a black community, um, I grew up in a black community and saw my father. And what it really all boils down to, and the reason this school has changed over the three years that I've been here, is allowing the community members, in my situation, students, to have a voice. To build relationships and to have a voice. And we really just want to do what my father did as a, cop, a police officer in Mississippi, to know the citizens that he works and serves and protects, to have a relationship with them, like we do here at Sullivan with Kids. And we really just hope that the police officers and the task force here will listen to you community members here tonight and think about that and how can we build the relationships of police officers in the community and our students and their relationships because that's where it all starts everything starts with a relationship and I just really believe that and I'm hoping that we can get some some solutions to this world that we're living in right now and this equity thing is not going away it started a long time ago before any of our grandparents were born and we have to keep fighting, and I'm going to keep fighting the equity fight because I'm a champion of equity, and all kids, all kids, all kids of color deserve everything that I was received as a child. So have a great night. Thank you very much. Chad Adams, everybody. Um, now I'd like to bring up uh, Charles Hardwick. He is from the Howard Area Community Center. Like I said earlier, Chicago is a city of neighborhoods, right? Neighborhoods and communities and organizations and it's because of leadership in those neighborhoods, in those communities that we have a great city and that's why Charles is here. Give it up for Charles Hardwick, everybody. Well, I don't have to introduce myself, he did already. So I'll get right into it. I've been to New York to talk about police accountability. I've been to Milwaukee, Wisconsin to talk about police accountability. The last uh, time I talked with the head of the Chicago Police Department, he wanted to reconcile with our community. I said to him, from my vantage point, reconciliation means that we've had a relationship and it's gone wrong. I don't think that we've ever had a relationship with Chicago Police Department. So therefore, we're not going to reconcile. We're going to try to build a relationship. And I think we start by getting the gangbanger police out of those playing cars, putting uniforms on them, and having them to talk to our community. Thank you. Uh oh All right. Um, as more people come in, ladies and gentlemen, those of you that just came in, if you need a card, raise your hand to make sure that you get an opportunity to fill out a card and come up and speak or have your comment read. So if you just came in and you did not receive a card, just raise your hand, guys, and we'll make sure that you get a card. All right, uh, right now, I'd like to bring up Lori Lightfoot. Lori is going to uh, come up. She's chairman of the task force, among other things, and an incredible public servant. And uh, she is here to introduce you to the members of the task force. Give it up for Lori Lightfoot, everybody. Good evening, everyone. Come on, you can do better than that. Good evening, everyone. It's our great pleasure to be here um, on the north side of Chicago. Um, as uh, Matt said, this is our fourth uh, public forum. We've had them all over the city, the west side, the south side, and on Tuesday night um, in Pilsen. 
And there are some common themes that, that resonate um, and that we've heard from people really all over the city. But I want to reflect upon um, a, a meeting that we had before the start of this forum. And that's with um, Principal Adams and some of the students here at Sullivan. And they talked to us about their experiences with the police, um, their experiences with feeling fearful, but also feeling safe. And one of the big takeaways for me um, from that discussion where there was a lot of honest conversation around the room shared between the adults and the students is a sense of optimism. Now, that's, optimism doesn't paper over the challenges that we face. It doesn't paper over the frustration and the anger that is out there among people all over the city in the way that they feel like they've been disrespected by police officers and the perception that we've heard loud and clear from a number of you that they don't believe that the police officers uh, respect their humanity. But I hope and I believe that we are all here tonight, and I know I speak for uh, my fellow task force members and the members of the working group um, that are out here in the audience. We're here and we're gathered together in part because we want to listen and we want to learn, but we love our city and we want to see the relationship between the police and the community get better, be in a different tra trajectory. I respect the brother who talked about the fact that there was no relationship, so we've got to start about thinking about how to build that. I think people have different perspectives on that. But fundamentally we know that in this moment, if we don't seize the opportunity, to face some hard truths, we will never be able to fix what is wrong and what ails us. And the police department is an important institution for all of us. For those people who need the police because there's crime on their block, because there's something going on in their neighborhood, we need the police to be able to do their job and do their job in a way that is respectful. So I wanted to start the evening by setting that tone and tell you how much we value you being here and how much we're interested in hearing from you. I'm all about solutions um, and we definitely want to hear the issues, but I also want to challenge you to come to us with very specific concrete solutions. Now I'm sure we're going to hear, like we've heard in other instances, that there's a lot of skepticism about this task force. We're appointed by the mayor, how independent can we possibly be? And all I can tell you to do is, is watch and, and listen to the way in which we translate the information that we're hearing from you, the way in which we come together in our final report and the findings that we have and the specific recommendations that we have. I am fairly, I am confident that those findings and those recommendations are gonna be reflective of the voices that we've heard at the various forums all over the city and the number of people that have come to us um, in other ways whether it's through our website, through emails, through letters, or in other kinds of conversations, communing, communicating to us their experience, their pain, their hurt, their anger, and frankly, again, their optimism about an opportunity for change. So I just want to thank you all for being here. And let me introduce um, my fellow task force members who are here tonight. Um, to my left is Sergio Acosta, and I'll ask them all to say a, a short introduction, um, and then we'll come back to you. Sergio? Uh Thank you, Lori. I'm just going to be very brief because we do want to get to all of your comments. Uh, yes, my name is Sergio Acosta. Uh, I am a former federal prosecutor. One of the things I did for seven years here in Chicago was prosecute uh, criminal civil rights cases. Uh, I have prosecuted police officers uh, for offenses. I've also worked with police officers. I know there's a lot of work that needs to be done here in the city of Chicago. I'll echo uh, Lori's comments with respect to we understand your skepticism. Uh, not just in general, but about our task force in particular. Uh, I can assure you, for myself, I wouldn't be doing this if I wasn't convinced that uh, we are independent. We are going to listen uh, to what you have to say, just as we've listened to other people at the other public forums, uh, and we're going to make some very strong recommendations uh, that we hope will be adopted by the city. Uh, we hope that those recommendations will lead to, uh, over time, because this didn't occur overnight, it's not going to get fixed overnight. Uh, but there are a lot of good things we think that can be done to help foster uh, better relations between the police and the community. Uh, and that's one of the reasons, that's the main reason we're here tonight, is to hear from you, your ideas. Uh, and we look forward to, uh, to speaking with you about that. Thank you. Randall Stone. Good evening. 
So my current uh, responsibility, my day job, is I, I teach uh, and I run a project, criminal and juvenile justice project at the University of Chicago Law School. And we represent children and young adults who are charged with crimes and we defend them in juvenile court and we defend them in adult criminal court. And I've been doing that off and on for many, many years. Uh, what I'm doing on this task force uh, is related to that representation because many of my clients over the years and my clients' families reported being abused uh, by the police, either physically or verbally or, and disrespected. So that's why I'm on the task force. The area that I'm covering is community police relations. And we're going to be looking at five kind of sub areas. We're going to try to look at accountability, how do police officers, how are they held accountable when they err, and how are they rewarded uh, when they do the right thing. We're going to be looking at uh, human and civil rights being protected uh, by the police. We're going to look at community policing in terms of what does that mean, how do we define it. We're going to be looking at addressing uh, racism. And we're going to be looking at um, training. And those are the five sort of areas that my working group is about 20 different people from different organizations uh, all across the city. And that's what we're going to be doing in our working group and then submitting some recommendations. So I appreciate uh, any comments and help and guidance that you might be able to give us. Thank you. Good evening. My name is Victor Dixon, and I'm the president of the SAFER Foundation. Uh, the SAFER Foundation helps people who are reentering uh, from prison and jail get training and employment. Uh, we work with people with criminal records, uh, regardless of where that record might have occurred. Uh, I decided to join the task force because I'm usually working on the back end helping people after they've been involved in the system. And we know that the uh, policing activity is the front end, where people in, uh, first get into the criminal justice system. So this was an opportunity that I felt uh, to do something that could potentially uh, keep so many people from entering the criminal justice system. I'm going to be helping uh, Randolph uh, with the uh, community police relations and we have a small team that's really focused on the issue of racism and how we begin to address that in the police department. Thank you. And Joe Ferguson. Good evening, everyone. Thanks for being here. Um, I'm Joe Ferguson. I'm the Inspector General for the City of Chicago during uh, in my day job, I think, is what Randolph referred to it. Um, I am part of a, one of the working groups that is looking at the overall um, legal oversight and accountability system and structure. A lot of themes have already been struck here as to sub subcomponents and, 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 and forces that are um, being examined. Um, and the question then becomes, what is, what is the current system and how does the current system operate to inhibit or, or obstruct the higher objectives that we would all have and allows the darker forces to persist. Um, some of those darker forces having persisted for generations upon generations and how the structure, the laws, the regulations need to be changed to achieve true transparency and true accountability um, for the police department. I'm looking forward to hearing your comments and suggestions. Thank you all and I'll turn it now back to Matt. All right, guys, we're about to start the public comment portion of the program tonight. So we're going to have speakers and non-speakers. I'm going to call the speakers up. The microphone is right here. And uh, while they are coming up, oh, I have two microphones. So if you're over there, I'm sorry, I didn't see that one over there. So you got two microphones. Just work your way up to the microphone. While you are working your way up, I'll read some of the comments. So if you do not want to speak, just fill out one of the cards, put your comment on the card and I'll make sure that I read it as well. If you do not have a card, raise your hand and we will make sure that you get a card. With that, I'd like to call up our first speaker, Calvin Harris. Calvin comes up. Come on up. 
Actually, that's our first speaker right there, right? <laughs> Baby's expressing herself. There you go. Calvin, are you here? Yeah, right here. There you go. Step on up to the microphone. And I'll read the comment from Zachary. Guys, Zachary says, almost four years after murdering Rakia Boyd, why is Dante Servan still receiving a paycheck from CPD? I think uh, I, I recognize many of you from our uh, monthly police board meetings. As you know, charges have been filed to terminate the employment of Dante Servan with the police board. They were filed last fall. Uh, Mr. Servan's uh, evidentiary hearing will be scheduled shortly, and the case will take the normal, case, the normal course that it does. Good evening, sir. Mr. Harris. Good, good evening. My, like to say, my name is Calvin Harris. And I've been having problems with the police for the last past 10 years. And it started with uh, the kidnapping of me, carrying over to the St. Elizabeth Hospital where I was stripped and shot in my testicle with a virus of bacteria. I filed a report, but you never received it because they covered it up. I have been... Uh, Taken, uh, uh, what's it? I gotta get it all together. I got, uh, got so much on my mind. All right, brother. I only got two minutes though. <laughs> and I've been, uh, sodomized. I have been, uh, been infected with bugs that come out my skin, my head, my face right now, down to date. This is still happening to me as I speak right now. I've been on surveillance ever since then. Back, back then on April the 4th, there's uh, what the Institute of Technology, Institute of uh, Technology, Tuskegee, and uh, when it was uh, infecting these One minute. people with syphilis and gonorrhea, they decided they they to pick that day to do all this to me on April the 4th, uh, 2008. i never forget that day. They took 10 years out of my life for no reason. It's because I'm black. I have no criminal background history. I have impeccable and Macklin background. They did all this just because I'm black. And I still have not, I see no justice right now today. 30 seconds. I would like for to know where I can in contact with the Department of Justice, so I can uh, voice my complaint to them. And Inspector General, I'd like to have your phone number so, uh, so I can talk to one of you all. And I have been to WVM countless times with this problem last year. 15 seconds, Mr. Harris. Uh, you can talk to Ms. Flute. Uh, I think she's a uh, Cliff Kelly producer. I actually took down a report. It's, it's written down, Matt. They wrote it down. I talked to uh, Melody Spann, and I haven't heard nothing from nobody. Like, I'm out here by myself, deserted. I just need a lawyer, somebody, you know, to get these police off the street. So this won't happen to no one else, but they did to me. Thank, thank you, Mr. Harris. Thank you, sir. Kathleen Hogan. Kathleen Hogan, please come up to the microphone. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, I also want to let you know that uh, tonight's meeting is being videotaped and will be available on the Police Accountability Task Force website, which is chicagopatf.org, where you can also submit some public comments as well. Uh, good evening, Ms. Hogan. How are you? Good evening, sir. How are you? We're absolutely wonderful. Welcome to the hood. There you go. North side in the house. I didn't think the north side had problems with the police. I'm from the south side. I am a longtime Rogers Park neighbor and a lifelong Chicagoan. But my orientation to this issue stretched across town to where I was raised in Mount Greenwood, a neighborhood uh, yes. that is home to a lot of police officers, both when I was a kid and currently. Still is. <laughs> yes, this is a neighborhood where uh, regime change will not happen in the state's attorney's race in two weeks. But then and now, um, 
Our home was the only one on our block where the N-word was not allowed. The only one on my block. And then there were a few others. But racism is, bottom line, the start and end of our problem as far as policing goes. The other piece is political. We've never had political leadership that was brave enough to uh, confront racism. Quite the opposite. The, the racism of our quote unquote leaders has used the police force to carry out their policies. Fred Hampton, anyone? Oh yeah. Okay. So Laquan McDonald and all the previous are, are, are a long line, and someone up there already said it. This has been going on my entire life. And I took the COP exam in 1975 with 30,000 of my fellow Chicagoans. But I think by the time I got to the AAA candidate oral interview, they might have looked in my eyes and saw that I was a civil rights person. And that was in 75. These are my recommendations. Hire cops that want to serve in the neighborhoods. I can't tell you how many times I, I was told as a store owner in this neighborhood for 36 years, well, that's what you get for living in a shit neighborhood. <laughs> yeah, it's funny. It's not when they say it to you in your own neighborhood half a dozen times over a half a dozen years. Stop the revolving door here in the 24th district. We used to be a training ground, which meant we were breaking in a lot of new cops. That was great when we had a wonderful, uh, a good leader, which we've had a few uh, good leaders, but um, it does not help us get to know you if it, the revolving door is still happening. Train all officers in de-escalation. If I, if I called the police every time I had, I could have or some other storekeepers do in Ms. the course. Ms. Hogan, wrap it up if you could. Time's up. Do we have a minute or what? Is this a minute warning? Yeah, actually, actually, you're about 15 seconds left. I see. I thought I'd get more warnings. So, give Chicago police the kind of backup they need, mental health facilities, rather than closing them, open them. Substance abuse programs that you don't have to go to jail to access. Um, we simply do not believe that using the phrase gang-related shooting means that no one involved matters, okay? Reform both IPRA and FOP, the Fraternal Order of Police, they have both lied to the public and defended brutal cops over and over. Thank you, Ms. Hogan. <laughs> Leslie Combs, come up to the microphone from Congresswoman Jan Schakowsky's office. Leslie Combs, come up. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, please refrain from putting up signs. I know you guys want to express yourself and we will give you two minutes on the microphone to do that. Leslie Combs, are you here? Yes, yes. Leslie Combs, coming up to the microphone. Thank you. Good evening. Congresswoman Schakowsky is sorry she can't be here personally. She's in Washington, D.C. this week. She asked me to thank the task force for holding this public forum in Rogers Park and for being here at Sullivan, her alma mater. She specifically wanted me to thank everyone who showed up here to speak up, tell your stories, give your thoughts and suggestions, and most importantly wanted me to communicate how essential it is that the task force really listen to the community, really hear their experiences and firsthand knowledge, which have to be part of reforms. Thank you. All right. Thank you so much. Steve Craig. Steve Craig's here. Come on up. I'll read a comment from Jatem Atkins. Uh, why do you pick on the young men in Rogers Park? I feel you harass them more because of what's going on in the community instead of just doing your job. By protecting us, it's not fair and they're on their behalf. Stop harassing and protect our neighborhoods instead. I'm from Howard. She says, there you go. Good evening, sir. Hi. Um, can you hear me? Yep. Yeah, I, I just wanted to call into question the whole existence of this task force, which to me is just a puddle that's created by Rahm Emanuel's crocodile tears when he, when he saw the Laquan McDonald video for the third or fourth time, obviously. You know he saw it before. But anyway, what I want to address is a problem of power relationship. I mean, this panel is here to 
to hear people vent and there's no power in the people's venting other than your suggestions to the mayor. And I'm sure you all are well-meaning and probably have some good ideas to tweak little things in the police department, but the relationships of power are what's perverted here. We need democratic people's solution to this problem. We need community control of the police, not just a better relationship. We need to intervene in policy and deciding how our communities are policed and how to directly hold police accountable in the district at the street level with an all elected, all civilian police accountability council. One minute, Mr. Craig. Okay. So, I mean, this is a struggle that we've been uh, uh, organizing for in the neighborhoods, uh, primarily on the south and west sides. We're starting to move up to the north side to talk to communities up here. We've got a petition campaign, 30,000 have signed on so far, who believe in a democratic solution to this problem, where people have the power with the Civilian Police Accountability Council. And, uh, you know, this is, uh, it's, it's just so weird to hear people give solutions and, and this autocratic solution instead of a democratic one. 30 seconds, Mr. Craig. So um, please check our website out if you're interested at stoppolicecrimes.com. And uh, the struggle is, uh, is going to be a long one, but we know these panels are just going to uh, change little details about the police department and not give us the power like we should have. Thank you. All right. Thank you for I'm your sorry, comments. Go ahead. Mm -hmm. Sir, I'm sorry. Could you give us that website again, please? StopPoliceCrimes.com. Thank you. Thank you. All right. William Wells. Is Mr. Wells here? William Wells, and come on up to the microphone. Uh, thank you. Uh, I live evening, on the south uh, side of Chicago, but my daughter, son-in-law, and two grandkids live just south of Rogers Park and just east of uh, Lincoln Avenue. The neighborhood's been uh, safe for the last... Uh, well, since I've lived there for the last uh, eight or nine years. But just recently, I mean, I'm talking the last three weeks, there's been two shootings within several hundred yards of where my, uh, where my kids live. They're moving, and this is really unfortunate. I'm gonna have a lot, a lot further uh, to go to meet them. They'll be going out to the suburbs. And I have some suggestions about, or a major suggestion about how, what you should recommend to stop this kind of thing from happening. The way I see it, the mayor, the state's attorney, and the uh, FOP only are looking out for their own interest. You need to create a civilian police accountability board that's elected in the local communities. I think this will do wonders for uh, making the police accountable um, it's not going to solve all problems for sure, but I think it will go a long way because clearly uh, the elected officials are not doing their job currently. One minute, sir. I'm finished. Thank, Thank you. There you go. Good comment, Mr. Wells. <laughs> Michael Harrington. Michael Harrington, come up and I'll read a comment from Mr. T.C. McCoy. If the panel find that lawyers advise police officers to commit subordination of perjury, would you recommend them to the proper grand, grand jury for prosecution, even if it's someone you know? That's from Mr. McCoy. Good evening, sir. Mr. Harrington. Good evening. I'm Michael Harrington of Network 49, an organization of 49th Ward and Rogers Park residents. We're outraged by police violence and racism, official cover-ups, corruption, and lack of professionalism by more than just a few bad apples. Our police department must be accountable to us, the residents who pay the bills and are the ultimate employer. A strong plan for professionalism, accountability, and public oversight is necessary for a safe and just Chicago. Here are four of the many key areas of concern. Number one, millions for weapons. In reliance on weapons, tasers kill, they are disproportionately used on children, seniors, and the mentally ill. They won't end police violence. Our $10 million Taser International contract and millions spent on guns and military gear should instead target human, economic, and community development. Recruitment, number two. We call for deeper background checks, mental health, stress, and temperament evaluations, 
and scrutiny into the racial views of police applicants. Spouses and families of applicants can reveal who is not ready to serve and protect. Point three, training. One improve, minute. Improve police academy training. Require it for current officers. In particular, training on how to de-escalate potentially violent encounters and to reduce use of force. Point four, lastly, accountability and professionalism. Reinvent community policing and foot patrols. CAPS must include residents from every walk seconds. of life, especially youth. However, CAPS and more cops on the street, in fact, won't work, and in fact, will make matters worse without an expectation of swift repercussions for police misconduct. Adopt and monitor policies for immediate discipline, sanctions, firing, 15. and criminal charges for criminal conduct. Actively involve citizens, the ultimate employer, in scrutinizing police misconduct and strengthen independence from the mayor's office of IPRA or any other oversight body. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank Mr. And I've got copies here. That is four very good points, sir. And, and I, I assume the task force probably agrees with all of that. Sharon. Sir, if you, if you um, can send one of the staff people. Thank you very much. Yep. There you go. Sharon Kitten. Is Sharon here? Yes, Sharon, step on up. I'll read a comment from Anonymous here. Ma'am, you can just simply go to that microphone. I think, mm -hmm. I think it's working. There are many police cars in the city of Chicago, but response time is very high. Why is that? It's a question about the uh, response time. Sharon, good evening. Okay, good, good, good evening, evening to you, sir. Um, Sharon Kidden, I'm 59. I've life, I'm a lifelong resident of Chicago. I come from the southwest side originally, Midway Airport, one of the most segregated areas I have ever seen during the 60s and 70s when I lived there. I didn't know blacks and whites can live together until I moved up to the north side. I didn't know because nobody does that there. Nobody at the time crossed Cicero Avenue to get to LeClaire Courts, in, except for me, because my father did not want me going to a Catholic school. Anyway, I want to tell you something about racism. It cannot be changed. There's an inherent realm of racism in the Chicago Police Department that will never, ever go away unless there's a new generation of people who aren't, or who aren't, who don't come up like that, who aren't raised like that. But there are a lot of cops like that. And I want to tell you how that can change. You want to restore trust? Uh, you want the people to restore trust? You let them lead the way. You restore the trust One through minute. the Civilian Police Accountability Council. You let the people tell the police who, who's the problems in the community. Who has a mental health? Who, who but the community would know this? And that's why you have to rely on the community as the leaders of their community. And cops have to be accountable to them because I'm a white girl, woman, and I get to hear everything that cops say in the restaurants in Andersonville. Let, let, and I have heard them say, all white, all white cops sitting at a table saying, just let somebody try to resist an arrest, and that's license to do anything they want with them. I've heard this because I'm white, so they think they can say that to me. And I get, I get away with that a lot. So thank you very much. CPAC is the only way to go. And thank you for hearing our comments. You know, I work for the government. I, I did this too. Thank you for it. We like your comments, but I want to see something happen. We want to see something happen. We don't trust you, and we don't trust the mayor. We don't trust Anita Alvarez. Thank you. Hey, there, there's an election coming up March 15. There's an election. So you can express yourself about Anita Alvarez. Let me tell you that. Janae Strong, or is it Johnny Strong? I hope I'm getting it right. All right, there we go. Uh-oh. All right, if you want to speak, uh, fill out a card and come up to the microphone. John A. Strong, BYP 100. Hi, John A., how are you? Black women and girls are constantly forced to endure immense brutality and terrorism from the state on a daily 
basis. Yet our stories are often shut down by illegitimate institutions of power like this task force, PR stunt. And there are few safe spaces where black femmes can find institutional, financial, and physical sanctuary. Only 20% of sexual abuse charges against police officers are sustained with minor penalties, which displays an explicit disregard for the harm committed against black women. Chicago police officers Paul Clavijo and Juan Vasquez sexually assaulted women twice in one month in this neighborhood, Rogers Park, and though they had multiple misconduct charges in 2014, they are, were still not held accountable for any sexual wrongdoing. That ain't right. That ain't right. At the police board hearing last Thursday, I saw three black girls mourn the loss of their mother, Betty Jones, a black woman and organizer who was murdered by the Chicago police and consider collateral damage. I watched them pour out their hearts in front of you, Lori Lightfoot, One at minute. the other board you're on, and yet the only thing you cared about was their language. Would you be calm and articulate if someone considered your mom who was murdered collateral damage? Rakia Boyd's killer, Dante Servin, has gone unchecked for nearly four years, yet you protect the cops instead of the families suffering from this abuse. You silence them and tell them every month that their time is up. That ain't right. That ain't right. You don't make time for us, though you are supposed to be one of us. Black girls are raped, sexually assaulted, and abused by seconds. cops. You oversee, overseer. Now, I stand before you, Lori, as chair of another PR stunt called a task force that does not care and will not authentically engage with the community. How many seconds did you spend with black women and girls today in this city, in this neighborhood, in this school? 15 seconds. A better seconds. question. How much money have you made in the killing of black women and girls on this task force or on the board? Since you refuse to protect black girls walking the streets of this city, you obviously don't care to say her name, Rakia Boyd. All right, thank you, Janae. Thank you for your comments. Guys, I, hey, I respect and appreciate the signs. Did you hear me? Try, try not to put them up, guys. They just want to try. I'm just saying. I, I'm just saying. Just try not to. I want you guys, all of you guys, hope oh, brother, brother, hope oh, brother, Brother, fill out a card and you will speak. Brother, if you fill out a card, you'll be able to speak. Sir, you are unfair to everybody who have taken the time out to fill out a card. Sir, you're being unfair. Sir, sir. Now folks, all of you, including Janae, filled out a card so they can come up and speak. If people just randomly speak though, we're not, it's not gonna be fair to the people who filled out the card, sir. All right, is Valerie here? Valerie? There you go. Guys, look, the room is going to be made up of people who follow the rules and fill out the cards and get up here for two minutes and say whatever they want. Hold, hold, hold on, baby. But what we can't have is people not filling out the cards and just speaking out. So let's respect Valerie and Janae and everybody who filled out cards so they could come up and speak. Huh? Oh, I, I'm sorry if I said I'm sorry. Young lady, um, I totally respect you. Hey, y'all need to listen to WVON. Let me tell this, you that right now. Go ahead, Valerie. This task force cannot claim to be truly addressing police accountability without calling out the economic impact of the Chicago Police Department. Due to the unchecked bargaining power of the Fraternal Order of Police, CPD accounts for nearly 40% of our city's budget. This is ridiculous. There is no transparency or process allowing the community to know how $4 million a day being spent on CPD is allocated and why, why they need such a large share of our public resources. An uneven amount of money is being poured into a militarized police force that destabilizes our communities. Meanwhile, money is being taken away from resources that actually keep us safe, like public education, mental health clinics, and violence prevention programs. That ain't, right. that ain't right. In addition to the large portion of the city budget that is used to fund killer cops, Chicago public schools and Chicago park, di park districts have to spend money to fund police that criminalize our children instead of investing those funds into school libraries and more pristine parks on the south and west sides. Police misconduct settlements have cost the city 
$521 million just since 2004. This massive figure only accounts for the harm that the city has admitted to and does not include the legal fees and court costs. Half a billion dollars? Half a billion dollars could fund five new state-of-the-art high schools, 33 libraries, and countless mental health facilities and community development programs. CPD harms our cities with more than just bullets. And this task force is invalid if it does nothing to hold CPD accountable for its pattern of economic injustice. Thank you. Thank very you. good comment, Valerie. Thank you very much. <laughs> Reverend Marilyn, I can't pronounce the last name, is Reverend Marilyn? Yep, coming on up. Thank you very much. I'll read a comment from Caesar. Caesar says, uh, Police should reach out to the Spanish people and other ethnic people. Get them involved uh, with the cops or reach out. Reverend, good morning. I mean, good evening. Hi. So I'm Reverend good Marilyn Pagan Banks. And I just want to say that we need to make sure that the police know who they work for. I've had my granddaughter's uh, stroller, uh, what they call jack, when you jack somebody on the car. She's in the stroller. They, she, gets her, she gets the stroller jack because they think that my daughter might be friends with somebody who might have a gun. And there was someone like me stands up and asks someone, are they okay? Because I'm allowed to make sure and I'm allowed to surve surveil the police to make sure that they're not harassing our young people. Come up in my face with their white shirts on and say, ma'am, does he look like something's wrong with him? Nothing's wrong with him. It'd be a shame if you as a civilian were harmed because we're doing our job. We're allowed to stand up and protect our young people. We're allowed to make sure that our young people aren't being harassed unfairly, that they're not being stopped just because they happen to be black, just because they happen to be young, just because they happen to be outside with their friends. I don't need my four-year-old granddaughter, when they see a police car run up on the street, shout, don't kill me, don't kill me. My black grandchildren deserve to grow up and to know that the police are there to serve them and that the authority that they think they have doesn't belong to them, belongs to the people. And so if we ask them a question, we should be a, get an answer and be respected the same way they think that they ought to be respected. The police work for us. And I just want to agree with everything that's been said here. People need to be fired. We 15, need to vote folks out of seconds. office. We don't trust you. And like Charles said, this is not about reconciliation because we ain't been friends. We haven't been friends. We're not in relationship. This is a public relationship. And we uh, are paying our tax money, is paying for these jobs, and we need to make sure that they are being held accountable to the people and not to uh, some system that is guilty as hell. Thank you, <laughs> Reverend Marilyn. There. Is Andrea Graham here? Andrea Graham. Andrea Graham? Come on up. I'll read a comment from uh, Megan. Uh, my recommendation is stop spending money on police. Fund our schools, mental health clinics, defund the police. Good evening, Andrea. Hello, how are you? How are Good evening. You? I've, I've, I've lived in Rogers Park for, since 1983, and um, you know my sons have been harassed by the police, and one half of my hand says that they've had a favorable relationship, and the other half, you know, it's been negative. What I want to see is more of uh, you know, follow the golden rule. Just treat people the way you would want to treat yourself. If we would only treat each other the way we wanted to treat each other, the way we treat ourselves, it would be a lot better. I, um, you know, I just had a lot on my chest for years and years, uh, listening to my sons who don't tell me about their lives, but then I found out about it, and I have to, you know, do something to help them. Um, you know, harassing them, uh, uh, going into their pockets, taking their money, which is uh, uh, violating their civil rights. So um, now I'm at a different place right now where I just feel that we have to have more peace and we need to have more love with each other and we need to have follow the golden rule and do treat each other as we would treat each other as yourselves. Thank, Thank you, you Ms. Graham. Thank you for your comment. Thank you. Jane Heron, come on up. Uh, those of you who just came in, if you want to make a comment, raise your hand. We'll make sure you get a comment card. Fill out the card, and I'll call your name, and you come on up to the microphone. Jane Heron. Good evening, Ms. Heron. Logan Square neighborhood. My words are going to echo a lot of what's been said, not too much with angry words. 
And uh, I just want to uh, address the task force, and I hope that some of the audience will agree with what I have to say. First, a comment about this task force. We need public hearings on police practices in general, not just accountability. Also, given the amount of talent and experience among the people on this panel, it's hard to understand why the public is being asked for input. I think you panel members know what changes need to be made to policing in our city. But nonetheless, I'll mention a few general ideas. Of course, each idea stands for many topics that would require too much time to spell out. I should also say first that I've been very involved in community policing since before CAPS was ever invented. For the last 30 years in District 14, I've worked with many good commanders, including Hiram Grau, and many good officers, but I've also known overzealous and prejudiced officers who are a danger to the public. I think the general safety of the residents of Chicago should be the goal and motto of the police department, but actual practice in high crime areas sometimes makes officers seem more like vigilantes acting carelessly or recklessly. The training of police officers has to be changed radically. It seems like shooting is the first resort of our officers in so many cases, and not just shooting at suspects' knees or ankles to stop them. Why is that? Just as important, officers on the force must be subject to regular retraining, including target practice. It seems like there's a shoot 'em up attitude among many of our police officers. The whole police training apparatus needs an overhaul and reorientation. The review and discipline system in our police department has to be changed, and the public should know 15 how seconds, it Aaron. works. If clauses in the contract between the city and the Fraternal Order of Police interfere with effective procedures, they must be changed. That officers who maybe should be subject to criminal charges are given desk jobs for long periods tells us that the entire outlook of our police department is wrong. The department needs a professional public communications agency with policies that address the community's need to know, that releases a complete picture of what happened when there's a critical issue, and states what further information or actions the public can expect. Changes like these can make a difference in how the police are perceived, especially if the changes are announced to the public. Changing the public perception, Thank you, Ms. especially in high crime areas, is a huge task and an urgent need, one that we hardly know how to address. Thank Yet you, every Ayer. effort has to be made at improving police community relations to make sure that law-abiding residents of- Ms. Heron, time's up. Thank you. Thank you very much. Lydia Miller. Is Lydia Miller here? Folks, staff, we have some people that have um, cards waiting to be picked up down here in front. Can we please Lydia? help this gentleman? Good evening. Hi. Um, good evening. Good evening. Um, I am a resident of Rogers Park. I used to work at a restaurant in the neighborhood, and we had a lot of cops come in. And I had a cop, uh, several cops, one in particular, um, express some really concerning views. He uh, said that he felt that the neighborhood had really gone downhill since certain ethnic groups moved in. He, um, uh, he specifically said that he uh, felt that the Haitians, when they moved in, he didn't like that. And he said that, I assume black. He was a, he was a white cop. Yeah, you he can assume say. black then, let me tell you. Yeah, I'm, yeah I'm, that's, that's I'm my kidding. assumption. Um, he Thank also you. talked you about how he, he talked about how he missed um, the good old days when he could just round up any group of teenagers standing on the street and arrest them for doing nothing. I don't see police accountability as fixing the problem when these kinds of racist sentiments run throughout the police force. How can the police, how can they protect a community when they hold members of that community in such contempt? Thank you, ma'am. Reverend Oscar Walden here. Rep
giving up love I applaud number one I applaud bro brother but I might not get it back hey brother you know Brothers and sisters, brothers and sisters, brothers and sisters. Brothers and sisters, I'm fighting for you, and I'm Reverend Oscar Walden, and I've been fighting this fight for a long time. I'm fighting for you. Are you listening? I'm fighting for you. This this only a minute. Let me have something to say. I've been fighting this for 50 years here in this city. 50 years, can you, can, let me say this, I'm, I'm for you all, but I'm going to tell you, I'm going to be frank this way, I am going to be frank, I am here to demonstrate the fact that, that uh, uh, McDonald was not the first one that was killed in this city, only I was killed when my, my reputation was killed, see you can kill a man physically and shoot him, but once he's dead, you can shoot him a hundred times. That don't mean too much. But when you kill a man's reputation, when you drag his family name through the mud, they, they, that is what is so wrong about what you did to me. And I'm, wait, I'm here to say, please don't send any more innocent men to prison. Don't do it. It's wrong. It's wrong. My family has been wrecked because of the Chicago Police Department. And I'm here to tell you that I'm a nonviolent person. And I got to tell you this, you, and I, to this August board here, stop beating men, forcing false confessions out of them. Quit doing that. They did it to me. Can't have me four days in prison, pardon me, in the police station, and then after doing that, Give me 75 years in prison. Thank you very much. Amen. Late, lady. Ladies and gentlemen, uh, number one, thank God for young people. Thank God for this activism. Thank God for young people coming out and expressing themselves.
Hello, everyone. Uh, I, hello, everyone. Everyone, everyone, please, 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 everyone. Respect. I'm the principal of the school. I have children in the building. There are children in the building. Can, can you please? Can you please? Can we let everyone have a voice here, please? Please respect the building, please. I know, but we want to hear everybody's voices here. We want to hear other people's voices. Where's Ashley Boyd? I do want to let other people speak if they want to. All right, well, let Ashley, I want to give her the mic so she can have her two minutes, guys. She's speaking, all right. I, Hello. I, guys. Hello, gang. Hello. We, we want everybody to speak, so. But we feel your pain. We feel your pain. We feel your anger. But please let us talk. Please let us talk. Let some seniors come up there and talk. You need the help of the senior citizens. You need the help of retired police officers. You need the help of different communities. He gonna make a statement and let them and continue on this meeting. Listen to my show. <laughs> Please, please, please. This is our school. Please, will you respect our school, please? Will you please respect our school? Will you please respect our school? I know, I know but we're, we, volu we volunteered. 
We volunteered to have this here so we could have. We volunteered to offer this space so you could voice your minds. We were one of the only schools to do it. We wanted to voice. Thank you. Please respect our school. Please respect our school. We were one of the few schools that volunteered to do this because we wanted to hear your voice. We were one of the few schools that volunteered to do this so you could have your voice. We want to hear your voice. So please respect our school. There's children over here. Please respect our school. I believe in freedom of speech too. Please respect our school. Please respect our school. Thank you everybody for coming out tonight. You can express yourself. Go to the website chicagopatf.org. We appreciate everybody who came out and appreciate all of the young people who are expressing themselves. This is what it looks like when you have a police department that has done this for years. This is what it looks like when you have a police department that has run rampant, has disrespected the rights of its citizens. This is what civil protest looks like, ladies and gentlemen. When you have a fraternal order of police that protects bad cops and allows for cops to kill people and get away with it, this is what it's going to look like. I embrace everybody that came here tonight, all the protesters. I encourage you guys to continue to keep your voice active. It's important that we change the culture. But let me, I'll say this one last comment. The real police accountability entity is the state's attorney's office. You have an election on March 15th. You got to come out and vote. Police accountability is at the state's attorney's office. If you really want to get real police accountability, vote on March 15th. There was one person who said tonight, you cannot change racism, but you can prosecute it. You can prosecute it. We need to hold this rally at the Office of the Fraternal Order of Police, ladies and gentlemen. That is what's preventing Dante Servin from being fired. That is what has allowed the culture of bad police to stay on the force for years. Thank you, everybody, for coming out tonight. Appreciate it very, very much. And thanks to all the protesters as well. Oh, thank you.